So at the end of the last video, I just showed you some basics of the architecture of animating in Photoshop using the timeline tool. And how all this timeline tool does is it keeps in memory what the eyeball is doing, what the opacity is doing, what the layer effects are doing, and what the placement of the items on that layer are doing. What it cannot do is I cannot change the pixels in the layer per frame. So if I, for instance, transform it and warp it for this frame to look like that, then it's going to change it for every frame. Because all this does, it doesn't remember the pixels, it just remembers the placement of the pixels, the opacity of the layer, and the layer effects. So if I wanted to make it glow, I could put like an outer glow on my layer just for that frame, kind of spread it out, right? And the frames would remember that, that the effect was on here, but not on here. So there's lots of things you can do. This is called in-frame animation. But it is not ever a good idea to have your frames out and then actually make a change to the pixels in your layer because it will change everything. The other thing that happens is if I add a new layer, let's, let's say I just do a duplicate and then I move that, look what happens to my animation. It moves that new duplicate onto every frame. So basically we're gonna use the timeline tool in the frames to test our animation every once in a while, but we're gonna build everything up in our assets as separate layers. And as we're adding new layers and new assets, we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to select all the frames and drag them to the trash. We are not going to hit delete. So let me repeat that. We're going to select all the frames, not all the layers, all the frames, and drag it to the trash can. If we hit delete, we would delete all of our layers. Right? All that does is delete the programming for the frames so that then we can add new stuff without messing up this idea of an animation. So basically the timeline is just used for animation tests and then at the very end to, to make all the final in-between decisions. So we break this up into two folders. So I'd like you each, now that you have your sketch of your storyboard, to make two folders. We're going to call it Assignment 5 or Sign 5 Assets. This is our treasure chest of all the little puppet parts we want to use and all the different backdrops we want to use. And then we want another folder, Assignment 5, Stage. Now really these aren't folders, but I want you to think of them as different locations, right? What these are going to be are two different Photoshop files. Because animations can't be printed, they have to be shown on a screen, we, we're going to do this in screen um, resolution, not print resolution. And we're going to do it at, at a high definition screen. Standard screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch. We are going to do our GIF animations at 150 pixels per inch, right? Which is just a little bit more than your high def screens. And we're going to do our animation at 8 by 8 inches. Now, if your animation won't work in a square, then I want the smallest dimension of your aspect ratio to be 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. So let me show you what that might look like. I'm not going to save that little test I just did. Instead I'm going to go to assignment 5. I'm going to bring in these folders. right? And now I have to start building my assets. So I'm going to use my sketch. I'm just going to keep it open as a little JPEG my storyboard sketch, and then I need to find those folders. So first, I need assignment one, right? Because I'm using assignment one as my setting. So I'm gonna build my first asset. But I'm gonna use my assignment one PSD, because not only do I just need the 
the backdrop painting, I also need this church as a separate asset because I'm going to be animating it. Its roof is going to open up. It's going to glow. So I have to be smart about this. If this is my background, this is my first frame, and this is how you should go about figuring out what assets you need. This is the first asset I need. The first thing I can decide is, do I want to crop it? I think I do want to crop it a little bit. I don't think I need all of that bottom part, right? But I do need a lot of sky. I need a lot of sky because my creature is going to come in and get sucked into this. So instead of making it a square, I'm going to make this dimension eight inches. So the first thing you should create is your setting, right? So what do I do? I'm going to say image size. I'm going to have resample checked because I'm going to change the, the resolution. And I'm going to make the width eight inches, right? That, that chain link to match the proportions is on. So it's automatically going to change my height. But then this is the big thing. I'm going to change my resolution from 350 all the way down to 150. It takes it from being 35 megabytes at this crop size to being only 5 megabytes. So I'll show you what this high def screen resolution looks like. If I view it at 100%, it's still plenty big. There's no reason to make it bigger than this. It just makes the animation take a lot longer to process, makes the file huge once we add frames. So this, I am now going to relabel my assets. So I'm going to say save as Carl assignment five assets. It's like a treasure box of layers with different things I can animate. And I'm going to put that onto the desktop. Okay, now because I'm in my assignment one, this isn't a flattened file, but I can merge the things I, I don't need, right? So I can merge the sky, all the things I don't need to animate separately. The mountains, I'm not gonna animate the mountains. The mountains aren't gonna jump and twist and slide in. That's just not my plan, right? If they were, I need to keep them as separate assets. So I can merge all these together. And just like I showed you with, with assignment, the cloud creature, like merging all the composited clouds together, the way I do that is to select all the layers by holding down shift. And if they're not all next to each other, you can just hold down command and select multiple layers with gaps in between. And then go to layer, merge layers, and now I'm going to label the layer. We haven't done a lot of this, but it's important in animation. And this is my backdrop. Okay. So that's basically the, the, the background painting behind my play. So that's going to be on in every frame I, I set. Okay, next. This is a little tricky. I built my church out of multiple layers. So part of that church, which I need as a separate asset, is on this layer. But the rest of the stuff is background. So what am I going to do? I'm going to cut the church out. Remember, this is GIF animation. It does not need to be super refined. It can be kind of clunky. I mentioned Monty Python in the first video, Terry Gilliam's animations for Monty Python, which are just done out of paper cutouts and kind of loose movement. That's a good, a good quality uh, reference point. They can be very satisfying. So what do I do? I lasso it, I duplicate it so that I have the church as a separate layer, right? And I'm going to call it church asset. Now this, this whole thing here in the background, I can merge into my backdrop. So I can hold down shift, I can hit command E, merge those together. This I can merge into my backdrop. So you're trying to consolidate 
So all of your assets make sense. This I don't need. This I need to merge into my church. It's the little church tower. Right. So now I've got an asset for the church that's complete. And I'll have to build more assets to show its roof separating and lifting up. This ice texture that I'm going to put behind my church, right? It's going to be part of the backdrop. The ice texture I can put behind my church. I'll keep it on top. I like what it does. So that's a texture fill. And then you have the water tower. The water tower I'm going to keep as a separate asset because it might shake, it might change, it might splinter as my creature lands on it. Even if it doesn't, I can keep it as a separate asset. This other stuff, this is just texture fill, texture fill. Now this texture fill, that foreground element I like, I'll call it foreground ice. But I need it to stay put even if I animate the water tower a little bit. So it needs to be a separate layer. Don't need my sketch. Now texture fill. Do I want to just merge that? Maybe. Let's take all these textures. Try merging them together. The problem is they're using different blending styles. Right? Like some of them are soft light, some of them are pin light. So when you merge them together, they might not look right together. You know, the overlay mode with the soft light. So I'm going to keep them here, but I'll put them all in a folder. So I select them all just like I was going to merge them, and I put them instead in a group. And I'm going to call that texture fill. Why is that helpful? Well, as my creature lands, I know from experience it will be really cool to have like the air around him move a little bit. Right? as he's flapping his wings. And so as long as this is an asset I can manipulate, then it's good, it belongs there. Okay, water tower, that's just generic texture, the church, and the backdrop. So I'm gonna label my layers. These are the important assets. I might even color them. I usually use green for my backdrop. I'm going to use yellow for the church because that's the color of the light beam that's going to come out that I envision. I'll use blue for the water tower. And now what am I missing? Does this have everything I need for my animation in it now? It's missing something pretty important. The creature. So where can I get the creature? I'm going to save this. I'm going to go to assignment I'm actually going to go to assignment three, right? Which is where we put our creature in the environment. And I'm going to go to my PSD, open it up. So now we have two Photoshop files open. And what I'm going to do is steal everything that's my creature and in front of my creature, right? So here I'm going to use command. Select all of these. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, save myself a lot of time, I go to image, image size, and I change it to 8 inches by 150. And that will automatically shrink everything in place to the right resolution. Because otherwise, I bring in all those assets, and they're huge, right? And then I have to individually shrink each of them. So now I'm going to select all this stuff. I can always edit it out. So this is organizing your assets. And then all the creature stuff. Now, I'm not going to merge them. I'm going to move these layers into this. So how do I do that? We've done it once before. I swoop this out so that there are two files, one here, one here. Those layers are selected. I simply 
grab them and drop them in.